surprise. Stop. Spring training begins tomorrow for Major League Baseball and specifically for your Texas Rangers on the Diamond Factory Hotline with us. You can find him on Twitter at thern 14 Texas Rangers pitcher Taylor Hearn, friend of 105 through the fan, joining us here on 105 through the fan. What's going on? Oh, man, not much, not much. Just getting ready to get revved up for tomorrow. Hey, man, what, what's a surprise been treating you like? First of all, when did you get out there? You know, what, what's it like out there this year? Man, so I got out here Sunday. Um, ain't really been treating me well because it's, it's cold. Uh, it was cold, cold and rainy today. Um, it's supposed to be cold tomorrow. And uh, I don't think it's supposed to warm up till probably later this weekend. So uh, not off to a good start. Okay, yeah, that's actually a great place to start for me personally because we think of baseball as a summer sport, warm weather sport. But when you guys get going, it can very well be chilly, especially if you end up on the road in like New York in uh, April or things of that nature. What's it like pitching in the cold comparatively to like the re- remainder of the season for you? It's uh, it's definitely different. Uh, I do know that I think within the first month of the season, we go to Chicago and Kansas City, you know, and those places aren't really warm places at this time of the year. Um, but um, it's uh, it's a little different. It can it can definitely mess with you a little bit mentally, but um, it's uh, it, it can also be fun. It um, <laughs> I think guys want to try to make the games go as quick as possible. So we don't <laughs> have to get at, you know stay out there long, but. Uh, there, 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 there have been some fun games. I think, uh, I think after a while, after you, after I kind of get warmed up uh, in the cold and everything, kind of, kind of just feels normal to me. And as far as this season is concerned, I want to ask you because obviously you were having different roles, whether it be in the starting, in the starting rotation as a reliever. How much more comfortable do you feel about your role going into this upcoming season? Uh, honestly, I never even thought about it. Uh, I kind of just go with the flow and kind of can do whatever you need me to do. I never really look too much into it. Um, and plus, I mean, the situation we're in, we're obviously trying to win. So I was, I was just like, look, you just got to let me know whatever you need me to do. All right. So when it comes to spring training, obviously you out there to work, but at the same time, there's got to be some level of downtime. What, what do you end up doing out in surprise in order to make the days go? Well, um, to be honest with you, um, fortunate enough, we have early days, and if there's happen to be days that I'm not playing in the game, uh, even like downtime today, uh, this is my chance to really catch back up on FIFA um, and uh, mainly video games as well. So this will this will probably be the few few couple of weeks I get a chance to really play video games hard. Um, other than that, probably go to the mall every now and then. But um, knowing how I am, I kind of get a little too tired from working out and stuff. And I'm like, I don't even, I'm kind of homebody and don't feel like leaving. <laughs> All right, so quick FIFA speed round. Favorite team to play with? Manchester United. Oh, okay. That's so you, what I'm talking yeah, we about. Got, we're uh-huh, spirits. Favorite uh-huh. player to use? Favorite player to use would have to be Marcus Rashford or if – or if I feel like really beating the brakes off of somebody, I'll use France online because people like to use PSG. So um, I like to use Mbappe as well. I like that. I like that. Um, who who do you play with? Like, is there anybody in the clubhouse that's nice as well? In FIFA? Yeah. No, n- nobody no, uh, Nobody can hang me. I, I haven't met anybody yet that could beat me. Oh, okay. I like that. Talk that talk, Taylor. <laughs> Anything else, other video games that you have to make sure you stop down and take care of while you have your downtime? Man, um, I just got beat uh, pretty bad in MLB The Show, so I'm kind of done on that game for a little bit. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You like me for real. (laughs) Yeah, I I ain't played that game. I, I played that game maybe twice last year, and one and the guy that I'm, I'm living with, he's letting me live at his house. Um, he beat me like twelve to three last night, so I was like, yeah. So it was kind of payback because um, I beat him in Madden and FIFA. So haven't found nobody yet to beat me in those two games. So okay, so are, are you ever looking forward to the middle of the week, like KG suggested to start the show? <laughs> <laughs> Um, there, there have been, there have been days. There, there, there have been days, especially. Um, I'd say, I'd say, um, probably during the season a little bit more, just because sometimes, like when you're on those long road trips, or we're gone for like a week and a half or close to two weeks. Um, let's just say there's an off day on Wednesday or you know Thursday or whatever. I'm, I mean, I'm 
dying for it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Taylor, just to get a little bit more serious, um, I, I wonder when teams or when leagues decide to like emphasize something for the league, how that comes down to you. Because I saw something earlier today that was saying that there's going to be an emphasis with pitch clock operators and umpires on balks. So one, you know, two part questions. One, how does that information typically filter down to you? And two, what's your level of concern or how intriguing is that to you? The idea that, you know, they're going to be looking for balks this year. Yeah. Um, for I mean, knock on wood, fortunate enough for me, I haven't, been called for a lot of box um but um i kind of i kind of really am a fast person um really not too too fast but then also with the pitch clock um i think i, I think it'll be good i think it'll be good i think it'll take a lot of guys um uh, a little time to get adjusted but i think with the pitch calm and then the pitch clock it won't it won't be that bad though but i mean you do have those guys that uh from the, uh, from a pitching aspect and hitting there are guys that like to take their time and and sometimes, I'm not going to lie, sometimes that, that kind of stuff is frustrating, you know, because, like, they do it to try to mess up your time and to try to throw you off. And now it's kind of like, no, nah, like, you know, like, you need to get in the box a little bit quicker. You can't take your time, you know, especially like Zompire calls a bad call or whatever it is, you know. You know, you know, there's, a, there's always those guys that if Zompire calls a ball that's, you know, calls a strike that's two balls off, you know, a lot of them like to take their time and walk around. It's like you're not going to be able to do that anymore. Is there a mental adjustment that comes with some of that, knowing that you're going to have to be making some of those different kinds of adjustments with some of the rule changes? What goes into some of that for you? Um, keep the same pace. Don't let the uh, don't let the clock uh, speed me up. You know, uh, fortunate enough for us, we're definitely going to be working on it during spring training. And um, you know, I've, I've always been the type of person to go off a of rhythm. I feel like if if I'm if if I'm taking too long on the mound, it kind of throws me out of whack. You know, being a, a, a tall guy, um, you know, I kind of need that rhythm. So um, I think uh, I think for shorter guys, it may it may benefit them a little bit more. So but, Taylor, um, I'm know. sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah. I didn't mean to step on you there, Taylor, but when when we had you in uh, the performance showroom a few weeks back for Rangers Hot Stuff, we were asking some sort of you know the ways that you've adapted to you know the new coaching staff and you you mentioned how they've been they've been giving you some things to maybe make you better but I, i'm really interested if you can give us some specifics what are the things that you're working on um leading up to this season to improve your game um so probably honestly one of the biggest goals i have every season is trying to improve my strike percentage you know last year um you know 2021 was a, a good year 2022 i had a really really good strike percentage as well and it's just to continue working off of that. Um, uh, I guess I guess whenever I was talking to Mike, you know, one of my goals is to always try to put swinger, uh, put hitters in swing mode early. You know, try to be the aggressor and try to you know force them to put the ball in play within three pitches or less. You know, and fortunate enough that was the same mentality that he has. And so um, you know, we got a chance to watch a bunch of video and been talking a lot this off season. I'm excited to work with him, but. Uh, you know, he Mike Mike is definitely the old school and I love it. You know, he's definitely a big guy like living down in the zone. So I'm um, definitely interested and go back I'm excited to go back to that as well, but then just mix it up going high in the zone and low as well. Taylor Hearn joining us right here on one oh five through the fan on the get right with Reggie KG on via the Diamond Factory Hotline as we not only are getting ready for spring training, we are also in the middle of Black History Month. Talk about it. And for you, your family a very unique history when it comes to the sport of rodeo what does the Hearn family mean to the sport and how you got involved in the sport as well oh um well I, uh fortunate enough for me i guess i uh my grandpa being the jackie robertson basically of how i like to put it of, of rodeo uh in the calf roping event um you know just hearing his stories and just hearing how everything he's gone through is you know part of me and it's just like stuff that was instilled in me through my dad and him and, and my uncles as well and it really when you when you think about bringing it over to baseball you know it's kind of it's the same way realistically you know it's not that many african American that play baseball so you know there's a lot of the same feelings and everything as well that it is in the rodeo and uh, also in baseball as well um, but man I'm not it's just it's, it's a huge month you know because I've been seeing people 
uh, posts about him and other trailblazers and rodeo as well. And I think that's huge. And uh, it's pretty cool to be able to say, that's my grandpa, you know, that's somebody that went through a lot just to get to this point. And this is a perfect month to be able to honor him and just him and, and all, all the other guys, even doesn't he have to be rodeo people um, that have gone through, but just persevered to, to make things where they are now for, for us now as, uh, as African-American people. So one of the things about like these greats in the game, especially ones that were you know milestones for progress, is we can talk about that. But I love being able to focus on the fact that yo they were really cold as well. Except I think you'll understand for me, and I imagine for a lot of folks, I don't necessarily know how to like quantify that for rodeo. Can you give us a little bit of example as somebody who has been in rodeo? How do you like what, what typifies excellence? What what is the thing that you could point to in certain situations, whether it's you know calf roping or whatever, that you go, oh man, that dude is nice when he's doing this. <laughs> um, man, it's. I would obviously say, um, you know, the belt buckles is a big one. Okay, as well, but but I mean. Belt buckles do speak for themselves because, you know, it is an individual thing. So rodeos, you know, definitely individual sport. But there's a lot of factors that go into it, you know, with guys, with the animals that they draw or, or you know, even in the event that, that I, I did in tie-down roping, you know, it's all based off the horse and you and in the uh, and whatever calf you draw. So, like, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So it's kind of tough, like, um, I guess I guess to put it in – perspective it's called it's almost like i wouldn't say luck but you know it's it's definitely off of the belt buckle I, I mean it's tough to say uh what else but like there's a lot of guys that are talented that uh, i've met that never won anything but have have you know just have that talent have that it factor like what they like to say in baseball you know but it's 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 very similar where you kind of got to <clears throat> you know put in a little extra work to be able to get to it but i mean belt buckles speak for themselves though Okay, so the question is, belt buckle, like, would you rather have that or, like, what's the other thing, like, baseball apparel-wise that would compare to, like, a good a good belt buckle in that way? Uh, like, is it a, a you know, nice, fresh cap? Like, what, what what is it? Like, you're talking about, like, just award-wise or what are you talking? No, I just, like, so a, sta- like I think a statement piece. Yeah, a statement I, piece. If, you, if, yeah. if Taylor Hearn, let's simplify this. If Taylor Hearn could have, like, the equivalent of a belt buckle in baseball, what would your statement piece be? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, man, first one, first one that comes to mind would probably be a Cy Young. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, let's let, we're going ahead and set our sights high. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I guess we, <laughs> on our hand, will have to start the uh, Taylor Hearn for Cy Young campaign. Is that is that how this works? <laughs> Hey, uh, I'm a, I'm gonna let you guys handle that. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a baseball player. We're, we're, yeah, we're the that, president how I looked at it. of the other Cy Young for for Tay, Taylor Hearn uh, Award fan club there. <laughs> Um, before we let you go, obviously this is one of the most anticipated seasons for the Rangers in quite some time. Is there, what's the feeling that you're gathering from not just yourself going into this year, but for this team and the excitement around this ball club about what the potential of this team is going into this year? It's, it's definitely, definitely a lot of excitement, uh, from a player's perspective. You know, when you, when you walk in the locker room these last two days and you, you know, you're seeing the Nathan Avaldi and the Andrew Heaney. Um, you know, and the Grom as well. But, you know, and then there's also like Sandy Leon and um, there's a bunch of veteran guys in here and there's a lot of excitement about it. But um, it, it's, it just raises your, I wouldn't say expectations, but it raises your, your almost competitiveness because you're like, man, like we really went out and, and, you know, spent money this year and got a bunch of guys. And, uh, you know, just like we did last year and just trying to make that, that necessary step. You know, so it's definitely, definitely a different vibe this year. You know, it's, 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 you can tell during throne program and just talking to guys how, how serious everybody is. And everybody's like, hey, man, like we're, you know, this, there's no more like rebuilding. Like it's like, hey, we're, we're actually trying to go after this year, you know. All right. So, Taylor, pardon me, I'm going back a little bit here, but you were mentioning how your grandfather obviously was like one of the, you know, monumental figures in rodeo. <laughs> And obviously, we always when we talk about greats, we want to talk about their personalities. And you have gotten a pretty fortunate look at one of those in rodeo. What's the coolest thing that you can recall about your granddaddy? 
man. And, and from whatever perspective that you want, whether it's just like coolest to you as a you know as a young child or what have you. But like, I just I want to get a little bit of a, a better feel for him as a person. Man, you know what? Yeah, one of the one of the things that I always admired about him was no matter where I went with him or even the rodeos that 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 we put on that he put on he would sit there and was open and talk to everybody like he would answer any questions he was he was just a very personal person that was one thing i've always always admired about him was like he was he had so much knowledge but like i've seen him talk to just the regular fans at rodeo that didn't know anything about rodeo and i've seen him like bring them back 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 behind the shoots where you know where the guys go up for pay their entry fees and all that stuff. Like he's bringing normal people back there and just kind of educating them on it. And I was always just so fascinated by that. And I thought that was so cool, you know, how he was just such a personal person, you know, and it's like, you don't, you don't really get that, you know, when, when you, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys have met athletes or, or guys that not in, in the sports world that are, that aren't like that, you know, very stuck up or just don't really have much to say. And he was, he was the total opposite. Like I, you know, I love seeing him have conversations with just the normal people at our rodeos and just people in general, you know. And and it was it was such such an amazing thing. And I always was like, man, like I was a little shy growing up, and I was like, man, if I could ever get to that point, I was like, I I hope I get that from him. And I, I've kind of I've, I've gotten a lot better at it, um, and kind of just being myself. And that's just kind of who who he was as well. All right, we can't let you go without letting you give us a little commentary on your Mavs. Luca, Kyrie, what you think about the fit mm. so far? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think I I truly think it's going it's going to work out. I think uh, the the one thing I do wish is that Mass fans would be just be a little bit more patient. Uh, you know, I love their I know they were kind of scrutinizing J Kid last night's game, and uh, I kind of looked at it from like a positive where it was like, hey, they were passing the ball back and forth, and yeah, they, nobody got the shot up, but it's like I think that just shows how much respect they have for each other. You know, and now I think eventually they both can take that shot, and I'm excited to see what they're going to do in the future and, uh, you know, go in the playoffs and then, hey, hopefully keep Kyrie here long term. See that, Mavs fans, future Cy Young winner Taylor Hearn is telling y'all to calm down. <laughs> and keep Kyrie they Irving long never, term. Dude, they will never listen. They will never <laughs> listen, man. I see it all the time. They're, like, blowing up. I'm like, bro, I'm like, I, I wish, I really do wish as an athlete, I wish like all those fans that just blow up on athletes, I wish they could just, I, I, I want to see them do that in that type of aspect. Like, I want to see the normal guy that's on Twitter going off on them. And just, you know, I want you to feel that pressure in the late game like last mm. night. You let me know if you're making that shot. Man, that's a whole different thing that I would love to talk to you about. Yep. At some at point, point yes. oh my goodness, we're gonna have to, we'll, we'll call have you to. back later in spring training. How's that sound? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm all for it, man. I, um, hey, listen, if you guys want to set it up, I'm all for that. Where I would love to get some random fans that think they can hit fastballs and stuff like that, and we set it up. Oh, I would, you, you count me in for that. <laughs> okay, okay, we might have to do something like that during the course of the season. You can find him on Twitter at T Hearn 14. Terrific guy, friend of 105 through the fans, Taylor Hearn, enough to join us here. On 105 through the fan. Taylor, appreciate the time, man. Stay Always healthy, good, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate seeing you guys. Hope, uh, look, look forward to seeing you guys soon. <laughs>